Alonzo and smart contracts have finally arrived, but now what? The extended UTXO model. Let's clarify some confusions and some deliberate misinformation. And the Cardano Summit is less than a week away. Have you registered yet? You definitely should. It's time for the weekly report. Welcome back to Woodland Pools, your place for the latest Cardano news, tutorials, and the information you need to grow your investment with confidence. Today, it's time for the weekly report. There is a lot going on in the Cardano ecosystem right now, so let's do a quick stake pool update and then we'll jump right in. As always, we wanna start off by saying a huge thank you and welcome to this week's newest delegators. We truly appreciate your support and we're really excited to go on this journey with you. Let's keep growing together. So with the rollout of Alonzo, it brought with it the rollout of the extended UTXO model. Extended UTXO was developed by the IOHK team as an enhancement on Bitcoin's UTXO model, specifically to facilitate a secure and versatile environment which can process multiple operations without system failures. So if this was the whole goal and they've been working on it for so long, why are we seeing things on Twitter and other social networks with criticisms and complaint and saying that, you see, Cardano will never scale and you can only do one transaction per block. It seems like some of this might be a confusion of EUTXO or some of it might be deliberate misinformation. So let's educate ourselves a little bit more on the extended UTXO model, what it is, and what the next steps are from here. And a good starting point is this blog that was put out by the IOHK team. So if we look here, Cardano is a UTXO based blockchain, which utilizes a different programming paradigm for decentralized applications from other account based blockchains like Ethereum. So right here is a big distinction we need to make sure that we understand when we're having conversations about this stuff. Cardano's blockchain is based on UTXO and Ethereum's is based on what's called the account model. These are completely different ways of tracking transactions and broadcasting them to the network. So if it's a completely different paradigm, then we probably need to approach it differently as well, right? And we'll dig into that in a little bit, but let's continue on. Cardano uses the extended unspent transaction output EUTXO model introduced by the Alonzo upgrade. EUTXO offers great security, allowing for smart contract cost predictability without any unpleasant surprises. This is a big complaint on the Ethereum ecosystem, right? The account-based model on Ethereum is a very simple way to be able to track all transactions on the network, but the problem with it is it gets very hard, as you've probably heard, to predict what the fees are going to be. That's why whenever you're sending a transaction, whether it's from your wallet or an exchange or whatever, they do an estimate of, we think it's gonna cost this much. But with EUTXO, we have cost predictability and no unpleasant surprises. So as a result, this offers a totally different approach to parallelization. EUTXO inherits the per branch design of the UTXO Bitcoin model, where one branch is by definition a sequence of transactions that requires a sequence of validations. And here's the important thing that we need to remember. DApps built on Cardano are not limited to one transaction per block. And while EUTXO only allows spending a transaction output once, it still allows for the execution of hundreds of simple transactions and several complex scripts. The article continues on digging in to the approach, how you can do things in parallel, concurrency, why they're different and all this stuff. But we wanted to actually scroll all the way down to here because we've been talking for a while about part of the great thing of the Cardano ecosystem is not just the wonderful team at IOHK and Charles and their official supporting infrastructure and team, but also the strength of our community and how we have smart people from all around the world that are working in conjunction with IOHK to not only develop solutions and approaches, but then actually broadcast those out and share them with everyone. And so this line here, they actually say, a number of other developers and community members have also published papers, videos, and articles to explain this a little bit further. For the video, if you want a deeper dive on EUTXO, what they link off to here is a video by Army of Spies, a really great channel that we personally follow. We highly suggest you check them out. And if you do go check out Army of Spies channel, tell them Woodland Pool said hello. But this is a really good deep dive into UTXO, EUTXO, and the account model. They also share a link to the Sunday Swap team and a long article that they put together with some great explanations of one versus the other, UTXO, the account model, strengths and weaknesses of both. So we recommend checking out both of these links that we'll share below, but for the sake of time, a good TLDR is this Twitter thread that they shared. So let's take a look at this. This is from Maladex on Twitter, and in just a few tweets, they really sum it up really well. So. Before we allow anyone to claim Cardano has a concurrency issue, let's make one thing absolutely clear. In Ethereum, everything is absolutely sequential. The pool selects the transactions based on reward maximization, 
And then everything is applied to the previous state one by one, sort of layered on top in a monolithic way, a nice sort of stacking mechanism to keep track of everything. So yeah, it's damn easy to write something that's absolutely sequential and has global memory. That's what everyone does when they write their first program. And some devs never have to deal with concurrency, not to mention a real one, like in a distributed database system. If any of you have ever written any code before, the first steps you take is you just throw all your variables at the very top global level and you have access to them everywhere, right? But anybody that's gotten past that point in coding knows that this gets really unruly really quickly. So with Cardano, we have actual concurrency, but it's to us developers to design a protocol that can use it. It's the complete opposite to Ethereum. You can have as minimal a state as you want, plus you've got finality, but with great power comes great responsibilities. And the great responsibility is then designing a sound concurrent system with a great user experience. So this thread continues on, but here's the most important takeaway. So does Cardano have a concurrency issue? Not at all, but to have concurrency, you need to design a concurrent system. That's it. So the main thing that we're seeing is that people coming from the Ethereum ecosystem, which we welcome by the way, but they're coming in approaching the Cardano smart contracts model in EUTXO solely from the view of their background of the account model. And you can't just copy paste that code in and expect it to work. The whole idea of EUTXO is to be able to promote scalability and concurrency and have multiple threads running at once. And you can't just stack them on top of each other in as simple as the account model. It's definitely more complex, but this is what gives it the power to be able to scale and grow. And then when we start seeing things like Hydra, even more so. So we wanted to make sure to address this head on because there's a lot of FUD going around about this. And if you hear anybody say, hey, Cardano can't scale, you can only do one transaction per block, feel free to share this video or any of the links that we'll have below. This is very early days and people are still wrapping their heads around this whole thing. And so we just need to make sure to, for those that are coming in and trying to learn, to educate them. And for those that are trying to spread around misinformation, we need to make sure that we stop that in its tracks so that they can't deter people that are new to the project and they're also trying to genuinely learn. And that's a great transition to this next article. So Alonzo came, smart contracts are launched. And for a lot of people, we were looking at it like, yes, they're coming, we did it. Now what, right? So if you're feeling like that, there's another great blog post put out by Tim Harrison, put out right when smart contracts were launching that said, yeah, today's gonna feel like a destination, but this is only the beginning. So let's look at some of the things that he says here. Let's scroll past all this background, but here we go. This is the important thing I think that we need to all keep in perspective and we need to share with our friends in the community that this is not a finality, this is the birth of a new developer ecosystem. The whole thing that we're expecting is for people to come in and they couldn't do so until Alonzo was here and smart contracts were live. But now that it's there, now we start the work of getting all these people on board. All the core building blocks are in place, platform, vision, mission, community, but it's still very early days for smart contracts in DeFi. And that being said, even though it's super early, we can still be encouraged by the fact there's already been great progress made. There are thousands of developers that have taken part in the Plutus Pioneers course, which we've talked about at length. Hundreds of projects have been actively working on various Cardano test nets and in privately hosted solutions. And over 150 projects are developing their ideas in Cardano's Project Catalyst, which by the way, registration for Fund 6 is still open. So make sure you register. And then when voting time comes, you can vote on the projects that you think should get funded. So we've got some great initial momentum. A lot of the pieces are in place but this is very, very early days. This is like the Wright brothers making their first flight, right? This is the start of aviation. The whole world didn't just stop there and say, nice job with the flight, now what's the next thing? Our live stream celebration that we had was you know, the successful flight of Kitty Hawk, and now we need to start developing better and better airplanes. And so with that, a couple of things to keep in mind. We're still very early, there are gonna be bumps in the road, early user experiences might not be perfect, and some dApps might have issues. We're gonna see some great development teams and we're gonna see some bad ones. Not everybody is gonna be approaching this with a positive or an honest mindset. So this, we cannot stress enough, please everyone, now that smart contracts are live, this opens up exponentially the kind of things we can do on the Cardano ecosystem, but it also opens up exponentially the amount of ways that people can try and scam you out of your money or lie to you in some way. So if you're excited about these new projects and you wanna get involved with them, but you wanna find a responsible way to do it, here are some good tips. Look to your community members for crowdsourced due diligence. There's a lot of great community members, like the articles that we linked above, that dig really deep into these things. So find a trusted source 
and see what they have to say. Find projects that have a positive history of open and transparent communication, social channels, websites, and good technical track records. Let's lean on each other, let's help each other out, and let's not get too excited and then just hastily run into something and then we find out that we get scammed or the thing never materialized. Personally, on this channel, we take a very conservative approach and we take a very, let's wait and see and let things prove themselves. But if you're trying to get, you know, really early days in some of these projects, at the very least, do some good research, find some trusted sources, and make sure that things look right before you jump in with both feet. Oh, hey. Just a quick plug for our next Cardano Q&A live stream. Join us this Wednesday, September 22nd at 6 p.m. Eastern, 2200 GMT, and ask us any questions you have about anything at all. Crypto, Cardano, whatever's on your mind. It's always a good time. Can't wait to see you there. And then, I can't believe it's less than a week away, the Cardano Summit. Okay, so if you've not registered yet, you need to come to summit.cardano.org. And even if you're planning on just live streaming it from your house and letting it play in the background while you're doing laundry or something, you gotta register. It's gonna be an amazing time. They've already hinted at some huge partnerships they're going to announce. They're gonna talk a lot more about Hydra and Mithril and all the things coming next in Basho and Voltaire. It's gonna be amazing. If you wanna attend something in person, when you go to register now, you can select a local meetup to show up to and there'll be actual an in-person event that you can be there for. And for those that wanna to go to the big one, come and join us in Wyoming. We're gonna be driving up there. We'll be there all weekend. We already know of a few community members are gonna be there with us. A lot of other stake pool operators that we're familiar with are gonna be there. It's gonna be an incredible time. But whether you can go to a local meetup or whether you can come to the Wyoming one or if you wanna just stream from home, Let's all share in this excitement together. It's gonna to be amazing. The summit's gonna be on Saturday and Sunday. So we probably won't have a chance to publish our weekly report until either Sunday night or Monday morning. But rest assured, we're gonna cover all the highlights and we'll be able to share them all with you. If you missed last week's live stream where we all cheers together to the epic boundary that brought in Alonzo and Smart Contracts, check it out. It was a really, really cool time. If you wanna chat in real time before the conference, join us at our Q&A live stream or in our Telegram group down below. Make sure you register for this summit and we'll see you next week.